Fabio Wardley knocked out Fraser Clark in the first round to retain the British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles. It was a stunning finish. An explosive right over the top shook up Clark and Wardley mm. smashed him down into the ropes. He actually suffered a really bad injury, Clark, as yeah. uh, a, a result. Um, he looked at possibly a broken jaw, something like that. Uh, after the brilliant win, heavyweight boxer Johnny Fisher spoke about what's next for Wardley. Just about to say, Joseph Parker's looking for a fight or a dance partner. Zilly Zhang, people like that, is on that periphery now. After you win the British title, I think you're on that pedestal. He's now won it and defended it multiple times. You're on a pedestal to fight in them big European and then on to world level fights. So them guys, the Parkers, the Zangs, the Caballels, they should all be on his radar. And I'll, I'll give him a good chance. I've sparred countless rounds with Fabio Wardley. I know what he's all about and he's got that doggedness and that heart and grit that you can't teach. When he's hurt, is when he's most dangerous. And I think he can go a long way in this game and that proves it right there, that round one stoppage. Yeah, that was Ronnie Fisher then that joined uh, Talk Sport yesterday. Um, by all accounts, uh, Fraser Clark, uh, Clark even will have an operation to repair damage to his jaw and cheekbone after that first round loss to Fabio Wardley. And uh, for more stories, you can visit our website at uh, talksport.com. Now, it's time for a bit of this. What is the answer? No debate from me. He's not telling the truth. I think about that hour ago. Yeah, I think about that. It's baffling me. I'll be shocked. I don't agree with it. What could it be? It might take a couple of weeks to think about it. I don't think there's any debate. I know the answer. Perfect cocktail. I, I kept thinking to myself, bonkers. bonkers. That's how that one. <laughs> I always love that bit at the end. Bonkers. Uh, yes, it's our time to focus on the most pressing issues in sport. And there is simply no one better to answer those questions than our very own Tony Cascarino, who was once awarded the Evening Standard Player of the Month Award mm. back in the 1980s. So, Cass, let's start with our first topic. Arsenal fans have accused Graham Souness of being jealous of Arsene Wenger after he claimed the Frenchman got very lucky during his managerial career. Speaking to the Three Up Front podcast, Souness said, I've been uh, on the bench listening to what he's telling his players to do. I've been working for Sky in games where he's made very strange decisions. My take on him was he got very, very lucky at a time when French football produced its greatest ever group of players. Before we get your thoughts, on the Saturday session, former Arsenal player Perry Groves defended Arsene Wenger after Souness's outburst. As well, he said about he inherited the best mm. back five, right? So he went from Dave Seaman, Lee Dixon, Tony Adams, Steve Bold, Nigel Winterburn, yeah. right? So when you come into a club, it's great if you've got that solidity, yeah, which fantastic. is great. But all of a sudden then, then you go into... The Invincibles and the, and the Double Doubles of Lauren, Campbell, Torre and Ashley Cole. Jens Lehmann in goal. So and Jens Lehmann in goal. It's a new back Complete five. Complete new back five. Yeah. And Invincibles, which, you know, go, just goes without saying, he's never been done in English at the top flight level ever. Mm. And to say, he contradicts himself because he said he's not a football man, but I've never talked to him about football. And he said, oh, some of these substitutions... Everybody can disagree with some substitutions, mm. but it's your body of work, what you put in front of people, and you say, yeah, there goes three Premier League titles, invincibles. All right, so that's what Perry Groves had to say. Soon as calling him lucky, do you think Wenger was lucky? No, <laughs> no, he can't. He can't because um, he done an incredible job at Monaco as well, by the way. And you might say, well, yeah, Mon Monaco had the luxuries. He took Haitley to and Hoddle to Monaco and and made them play their... I said made them, help them to play their best football in their careers. They've done brilliant for Monaco. Um, mm -hmm. So, no, I wouldn't say that. I would say that also that he knew how good some of the young players were and he persuaded them to come. And I'll give you one example because I played against Perez when he was at Mets. And I played for the local rival, Nancy, and we played. And I remember saying to people, well, that Perez is some player. Mm. That is some player. He's, he runs like a duck and, you know, had a strange stride the way he ran. And then also um, he went to Marseille and he struggled. Didn't have a good time at Marseille. Didn't play particularly well. Marseille had a really indifferent season. He was their big signing. Wenger took him from Marseille. Yeah. And we don't have to answer really much on Perez <laughs> after, do we? Fabulous talent. I mean, um, so and look at and, and look, he's laid it out there, hasn't he? You know, we're looking. You know, you're looking at what he produced with his team, changing backboards. Perry said everything there. I wouldn't agree with Graham on that. Uh, mm, sometimes yeah. you need to be lucky. Look, and he brought he brought in great players. You know, even Alexis Sanchez when he brought him in, he fitted so well into the team. And yes, it didn't end well, but that was for different reasons. But he brought loads of players in like that. Pizzi, 
Manuel Petit, yeah, he was a World Cup winner, oh, but he was brought in to do a role. And Thierry Henry and what happened with him at Arsenal. And, and he didn't play his best football when he when he first left Monaco. He didn't play his best football. He had a year of indifference. The year that changed Henri was after his first season. He sort of grew as a man and a player and progressed as... I mean, he was always technically brilliant. I played against him when he was 18, mm. Henri. I knew, I mean, I knew how quick he was. He ran me once and gave me 10 yards. Yeah, I think it's a slightly strange yeah. comment from Graham Sooner, so it has to be said. What I will say, in terms of the lucky comment, I think in every walk of life, everyone has you luck. You have to be lucky, And you have yeah. to create your own luck. And maybe yeah. that's what you could say well, with Arsene Wenger, that he did create his own decisions luck. Decisions are made, yeah. and, and you can say they're lucky. And don't get me wrong, these guys make mistakes as well. Well, absolutely. You know, Arsene Wenger made a number perfect. of mistakes. Yeah. No one, I don't think any manager's ever got... Uh, you know, if you say Pep Guardiola and you say, well, it didn't work out with Calvin Phillips... You know, Calvin Phillips might have a different view. He didn't work mm. out for him there. But he was a fine player at Leeds and he didn't work out for him. You know, managers, all of the, even the Sir Alex Ferguson, make mistakes. Yeah, of course they do. But uh, They learn uh, yeah. from them. We certainly should not tarnish his legacy, no. that is for sure. Uh, elsewhere, former Premier League referee Dermot Gallagher joined the sports bar earlier this week and he suggested that the former player could one day referee a top flight game. Have a listen. Do you think you're going to see a, a former Premier League football player Referee a Premier League game? Um, I think very, very soon, I would think. Cause there's, soon? Yeah, there's this move now to get referees through. I mean, I think it's a great idea of Howard Webb. He's got referees, if they want to be a referee and they show potential, to say they show commitment and that, they can get through very quickly. Whether a player will from the Premier League want to do it, I don't know. But there's a number of players already said, yeah, they're very interested. Yeah, Howard Webb has made that clear that he thinks it would be good to have players yeah. come through as referees. And I think he was talking about a fast track system, which some referees who've not been players mm. perhaps not happy about because they have no, to they do, got the, to do the, the full course. Route. Yeah, but I think there is a fast track that they're looking at with some yeah. of, some former players. Anyhow, it's not Disneyland. No, no, of course not. It's got no. to be. They've got to do it Sorry, right. Nat, but you can't. No, I, d I don't agree with a fast track. Well, I don't think that's what it's about, though. Yeah, well, no, they have to go and Hence do the. That's why full... he's saying one's going to come through soon. Yeah, they, they probably will do, and I think it will. I think it will definitely happen. And Dermot knows way more than me on this, hmm. but I don't agree with fast tracking. Okay, but you, you make them do. It's like saying, well, it's like saying, go and someone drives a car and say, well, fast track them to pass their test. No, yes, I and I understand that, but they have to do it. Yeah, you know, if you want to a... be a ref that badly, you'll do the whole, um, you know, progress that's needed to be done. So you think grassroots, they should be refereeing at that level, start there and well, work your way up. if you're that hungry to be Different a ref, levels, yeah, why yeah. not? I just don't agree with fast-tracking on that, no. But you do think a, a former player, it's it's a good idea for them to maybe go down this route? Because yeah. maybe they understand the game slightly differently, maybe? Yeah, they'll still be controlled by VAR, so... Yeah, of course, and we will still have decisions that they might make I, that we'll sit here and go we don't is. agree with. Yeah, I mean, there will be all the obvious problems of what clubs they play for and can they referee them teams. Well, I think then, we have to get yeah. away from that quite quickly. Mm, mm. So um, I do think it will happen, yeah, I'm absolutely in agreement. I'm just not a fan of the fast track. I mean, if you're going to fast track, then you've got to say to other people who are going through the system... Oh, look, there might well be that. If you're good enough, you can be fast -tracked. Yeah, and there, there might be that in place argument. anyway. Yeah. But I think, if I remember rightly, when this story emerged, there were some grassroots referees who were not happy because they're having to start at the yeah. bottom where, as opposed to what was suggested with this potential fast-tracking of former players into referees. But Derma Gallagher thinks it will happen soon. When that soon is, we will wait and see. Weekend Sports Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Sunday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.